It's about 8.30 in the morning on a Wednesday, April 11th. Um, first time video I'm doing a Facebook Live. So um, I'm demoing and videoing how to trim a large platter. Um, I'm on a kick wheel. Um, yeah, so let's just start. Um, my platter is pretty big, so I'm just uh, going to um, improvise on a chuck. So here we go. Um, all right. So I'm using this bucket. I'm going to use this as a large chuck. I'm going to center it. I'm going to tap it on center. go. So since my platter is large, I'm going to use a large piece of foam, put it down. I'm going to take my platter that I threw and going to cushion it so my bucket does not mess up my platter. Then I got to center this guy. I could center the platter and then center everything else on top of it, but just old training. So just little movements. I threw this on Monday. Slight little wobble in there. Still. It's closer before. I'm firing a kiln in case you're wondering why I'm at work this early. Um, firing guile. Firing a guile. Um, DBL. 30 with a automatic um, damper system, but I went manual because I'm doing a bisque. So, uh, got my trimming tools, my Dolan trimming tools. Um, shout out to Dolan. I've had these for about 20 years um, since I went to my first in Sika in Rock, no, Rockford, Rochester, New York, uh, when I was at school at Alfred. So, uh, and start trimming. So what I'm think I'm not thinking about anything at all. Um, I just want to get all this extra weight off. So and trim it, trim it up. I know it's not perfectly centered, but it wasn't perfectly centered when I threw it either. students I always tell my students that I like my things to be wonky so uh, they're always wonky so what's going on at the fine line today nothing I'm the only one here my boss opened the door for me to get here super early like I said because I'm firing a bisque all my giant vessels in there. So I threw this piece just to demo slip decoration for my Monday class. Um, I teach an alternative surfacing class um, on Monday afternoons here at the Fine Line in St. Charles, Illinois. So how much weight, how much clay did I use when I threw this? Uh, I think it was like 10 pounds. So it wasn't too bad. So 
So I'm teaching class at 1.30 today. And I'm going to my other job at Wabonzi Community College. Shout out to Wabonzi. I also teach at Kish Community College, or Kish College, as it's called, Kishwaki College. And I teach here at the Fine Line. So yes, I have three jobs. I think this is more like a shallow bowl than a platter, but it's okay. I can call it whatever I want. I have an MFA. So how did I get started in clay, I guess? Um, so some of you that know me, that are watching, already know this story, so I'm gonna repeat it again. Um, I was watching Mr. Rogers Neighborhood, um, late to mid 80s, and uh, he had this pottery couple come on the show. I was a little kid, obviously. <clears throat> And uh, they were demoing the woman, the, the wife, was demoing how to throw on the wheel. And I was watching the show and I remember thinking to myself that I could do that. I think that's pretty easy. So I was seven when I saw that show. Uh, the couple was Eva Kwong and Kirk Mangus. So I owe a lot of this to Mr. Rogers and uh, Kirk and Eva Kwong. I never met Kirk, Mangus, um, but I met Eva um, about a year and a half ago at Wabonzi Community College. Um, Doug Jepson, who's the professor there, had a wood firing conference and I just barely started my uh, teaching gig at Kishwaukee uh, College. And uh, I asked the dean if I could go, the school would pay me to go. The school could pay my way to go, sorry. Um, and uh, she said yes. So we're not a big community college, they paid half of my uh, Registration fee, went to the conference. I only went there for one specific reason. Um, I noticed who was uh, speaking, who were the uh, speakers, and noticed that Eva Kwong was on the uh, roster and was like, oh my gosh, she's so close to me. She's only 20 minutes down the road. So I'm gonna go. And I went. Uh, Took my took a picture of that I printed out of her and Mr. Rogers at the pottery wheel, which I have, and uh, went with that purpose to go talk to her and go meet her and say, "Hey, you're my inspiration of why I do this." So I got to the conference. I think it was Saturday, or maybe it was Friday. I don't remember. Finally had the guts to go and talk to her, and she was sitting at this table with all her friends, uh, colleagues, I guess, friends mostly. I asked if I could speak to her for a moment, and so I told her the story, I showed her the picture. Um, she got up from her table and came to sit with me. I was sitting by myself at a table. I'm, I'm a sort of loner, I'm an arty loner, so. Um, <laughs> She got up and sat with me and I was so surprised and I was so dumbfounded and so in awe and full of pride and honor. Still get choked up. Because she didn't have to do that. So 
So she sat with me the whole entire conference, the rest of the conference, which is awesome. So we chit-chatted, she gave me her email, gave me her phone number. Said if I ever needed any help with anything, it was cool. She could, I could call her and write her and do all this stuff. It was awesome. So again, she impacted my life. I don't write her very much. <laughs> I don't write very. I don't write my teachers very much at all. Um, but I've had some great teachers, and I've had some bad teachers too. <laughs> and from each of them, I've learned a lot. I've learned what to do and what not to do. So let's name some of my teachers, I guess. Start with art in general. Um, yeah, the earliest I remember that I really loved art I was in junior high school in Lake Bluff, Illinois. Mrs. Bohm, wonderful older woman who retired while I was in junior high school. She would let me come and work after school, mess around, draw, do a lot of enameling. And then when she retired when I was in school, I think it was sixth grade. Um, Miss Fishbach replaced her. So I was a little worried that Miss Fishbach was going to let me stay after school and work. We were latchkey kids, my, my sisters and I. So we had nothing else to do and I'd just stick around at school. And she continued the tradition, so it was cool. I, lo I really loved art and I. Ms. Fishbach and Mrs. Bohm are great examples of how to let students just work. They would stay after school and just work and help me, help other students as well. Then I got to high school, it was really nice. Um, Mr. Hortness, Richard, Hortness was my high school art teacher. He was awesome. Old school, 1960s, 70s, hippie guy. Who also retired while I was in high school. Sucked. Um, my ceramics teacher, Mrs. Schweier. Shout out to Sue Schweier. told this guy to uh, to apply to a school in New York because he wanted to do ceramics. She gave him the courage to apply and said, uh, what's the worst they could tell you? No. Best case is they could tell you yes. So he applied and uh, Got into Alfred University, go study ceramics. Ceramic art, not ceramic engineering. <laughs> I didn't stay at Alfred very long. Well, I stayed three out of my four years there. And then I transferred to the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. But while I was at Alfred, I had great teachers, uh, great graduate assistants as well that I learned from.
Doug was there, Doug Jack. He's my hand building instructor. Forrest Snyder was the graduate assistant. He's great. I don't know where he's at now. I know Doug's in Washington. Still keep in touch with them every once in a while just to say hey. For wheel throwing, I had Val Cushing. was also my instructor for uh, raw materials glaze calculation class. Malcolm Abati Smith was a graduate assistant then. He was cool. Still say hi to him every once in a while. Andrea Gill, I had her for a short time. She was, she was awesome. I, I didn't survive a class, embarrassing enough. An interesting, interesting story about Andrea and me withdrawing from the class, but I won't tell her because I won't say it because it's just, it's a little embarrassing and I don't want to get any negative stuff going on. Ceramics world is a small world, so. But she was a great teacher too. Her husband John, huge inspiration in my work. Still trying to figure out how he makes things. How he messes around with the interior of vessels of his vessels. I understand his glazing process because I get it. I do the same thing with my work sometimes. <laughs> So like I said, then I transferred to SAIC, School of the Institute of Chicago. Had Bill Farrell, it's one of my teachers, my throwing instructor. Kitty Ross, Dolores Fortuna. I had Kitty for sculpture and slip casting. Charlie Yon for a kiln building. Dolores was uh, the glaze calculation instructor slash raw materials instructor. I just think she did throwing as well. So then after Bill retired, We hired Xavier Tobes. He was awesome. He's more of a life coach than an instructor. Not that that's bad. But we had a good long life talks in our studio, in my studio at the time.
So then I moved to California. Well, let me freeze. I got married and moved to California. While well, in California, I was working on my secondary ed, art ed um, program, CSUB Bakersfield, go Roadrunners. Took ceramics classes just to keep my my hands dirty, and uh, had Joyce Cole as an instructor for independent study. She was cool. She basically gave me keys to the studio and said, "You can do whatever you want. You've got enough experience." So that was really nice. After that, I went to uh, New Mexico State University in Las Cruces, New Mexico to get my MA. thought I was going to get my MFA there and changed my mind and just got an MA. But Amanda Jaffe, who was, who's now retired, I think I have this problem of wherever I go and my professors retire. Um, Amanda Jaffe was my instructor. She was awesome too. Taught me a lot about studio practice. So after my two years in New Mexico State, uh, transferred back home. Well, I didn't transfer back home. Uh, look for another school to get my MFA to finish my degree. <sighs> Came back home to Illinois, went to Northern Illinois University in DeKalb, where I got my MFA, like I said, and had Ewan Quo as my professor, still there. And I know I'm going to botch his last name, Ron Mezanowski, who, who also retired while I was in school. All right, let me finish this in a little bit. So I do not create functional pots, as you can see. Um, if I did, I really wouldn't care if they were wonky enough. They're wonky. Because most of these pots are just for me. I rarely sell them. I usually give them away. to the best of us trimmed it too thin well life learning lesson all right guys see you later hope you had a good time bye